Hey y'all, I'm here in Reactor today, and I just wanted to go through some of these other envelopes that exist in Reactor. Remember, envelope generators are non-periodic time variant controllers, as opposed to an LFO, which is periodic. And I spent a whole bunch of time talking about an ADSR before and building out both an amplitude envelope as well as an envelope filter too. So first, let's just build something quick and dirty that we can test our envelopes with. I'm just gonna do a note pitch mini in, a gate. I uh, feel like a sawtooth wave today. Could do a pulse if we get tired of this, but let's just keep it simple. Uh, I'm just gonna do this for now, run this to my outputs. And then finally, let's go over and we'll add our scope. Once again, your scope might be in a different place, but okay, let's see. Okay, pretty good. No envelope on this yet, right? So the gate comes in, it just sends the one or, you know, the amplitude in here and there's no ramping up or down to it. I'm just playing on my computer keyboard again today, so I don't have any amplitude control there. All right, so let's start simple and get more complicated. Again, ADSR, which I've talked about before, and you can check out my other video on, attack, decay, sustain, and release. So let's start with something even simpler. Let's just do a LFO envelope, AR. I'm not gonna do the AD next, but I wanna do the AR first. AR, okay, so G in there, A to the out, and let's create com some controls for this. Okay, I'm gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna click on this and then I'm gonna go over here. This is just for our own sake. View, visible. Okay, now let's do some cleanup. Release, attack, okay? This shouldn't have any surprises, but let's just make sure we're clear on this, okay? Hit a note. It takes the attack time to get up to that amplitude. And then as long as I hold it, it stays up at this level. And then when I release it, it takes this release time to go down. So a faster attack, slower attack, slower release. Does this make sense? This is kind of like our ADSR, only simpler, right? We don't have that little decay built in there. Okay. Built-in module, alpha envelope. Let's do the AD envelope. Okay, so let's send our gate into the trigger, right? So this is what's gonna make that go. This white A here, if I mouse over it, it's the input for the amplitude. Uh, up until this point, we've been using the level that comes in on the gate for that too. So let's do it this way for now, and, but you could change that to one or something like that. Create control, create control. Once again, let's click on this, make it visible. Now you can see already that this looks slightly different. And the picture helps show what's different about this envelope. There's no hold at the bottom. So I'm gonna hold down middle C. I'm still holding that key down, but it's already released or it's already decayed, right? That's what happens if I release the key quickly. So let me turn this decay longer. So if I release the key, that decay just stops right away. We don't have this decay time. Okay, well, why would you want this? Well, let's think about how some musical instruments behave. We were messing before with the AR and we can think about, you know, maybe a bowed string instrument is kind of like the AR envelope. We can start, we'll have a bit of a slow attack, and as long as we hold that note, we can sustain it. Maybe you could argue that it has an ADSR, but maybe that's only if that string instrument has accents. This is kind of like a pluck. If I pluck a harp or a guitar, doesn't matter how long I hold that note, it's gonna be decaying, right? The loudest moment is that plucked time, and then as the string vibrates, it rings out. Now, we could make this slightly more interesting. Built-in module, hello envelope. Let's do A, D, R. 
attack decay release. So now check this out. Kate goes in, let me create controls for the rest of it. Go out, make it visible, clean it up. Okay, now this is even more like a guitar or piano. So now I have that attack and decay, but I also have a release time. So check this out. I'm gonna make my decay slightly longer here, my release time shorter. And so it's kind of hard to see from the picture what's gonna happen, but you might be able to guess. I'm gonna hold down the key. And then I just released it. Let me release it faster. Do you hear what's happening? So first the attack happens and then the, the decay starts. Once the decay starts, as long as I hold the key, it'll keep going for this decay time. But if I release the key, it will release for the release time. The decay time will be ignored and will release for this release time. So let's make that really super short. So again, a piano or guitar is kind of like this if you mute the string after you play. So again, you hold down the piano key as long as you're holding it down. The piano key doesn't sustain at a constant level. It has to ring out because it's that vibrating string. But if you lift up your piano key, the felt comes back down and mutes it. Similarly with a guitar, you can pluck a string and let it ring out. And then you can mute it with your hand if you want it to stop ringing. Okay, so far so good. Uh, this is basically as complicated as it gets. So let's just check out a couple more and see how it works. I'm not going to go through these ones here because if we understand these, all these guys are are the same as this ADAR ADR without an A, without an attack time. So they just start instantaneously. So let's go down. We're going to skip ADSR because we talked about that. Let's talk about ADBDR. Now, this is a new thing introduces a new part of this. Let's build it out, create controls. So this B here is a break point, okay? And so that's new. Let's make it visible. Let's set up our knobs. So this is kind of similar to the ADR that we were just working with, except now we have this break point, which is an amplitude. You'll see these numbers, right? It's not a time. It's a number from zero to one. So let's put this at 0.5. Let's ignore release for a second. So I'm going to hold down keys. This release matters. So again, if I release the key, it'll be short. But let's set our decay time one to be short-ish and our decay time two to be long-ish. So what happens here, I'll, just to explain it, and then we can hear it, is it goes up to the attack point, comes back down from the maximum volume at the decay one rate, but once it reaches, in this case, 0.51, then it'll move to the second decay rate. So right now I have a fast decay at first and then a slow one. Let's hear what that sounds like. Let's make this even shorter. So this is almost like our ADSR, except instead of the S sustaining, right? We have this breakpoint and it keeps decaying, right? Once again, our ringing out piano string or whatever we want to call it. But we can change the rate of where it decays. So again, make that decay really slow. Make that breakpoint lower. It's a little bit slower. Release. Now, the downside of this in comparison to an ADSR is you cannot sustain forever, right? But the plus side of this is now you have a sound that's being dynamic, has a change going on during that S. Once again, doesn't have to be our goal to recreate acoustic musical instruments, but we can certainly steal ideas from them. I just got a couple more I want to do. Built-in module, A, D, B, D, S, R. Whew. ADSR just kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit better than most of these. Attack, K1, breakpoint, to K2, sustain, release. Let's make it visible. Release, sustain, decay. All right, simply put, this is just like the one we were doing right before this, the ADBDR, 
but now it also has a sustain level too. So let's lock this down. Okay, so let's set our break point to be reasonably high. Quick attack and decay at the beginning, right? Attack, decay, gets this break point at 0.6, slow decay down to my sustain level of 0.17, and that'll stay at 0.17 forever. Now I'm at my sustain level, release. A, D, D2, down to sustain, release. Does this make sense? Boom, boom, sustain, release. Okay, I'll do one more and then we'll call it a day. Let's, for the sake of things, do this A, H, D, S, R. And then when I talk about this, you'll be able to extrapolate what the A, H, D, B, D, R. Turning into a bit of a alphabet soup here, but this H is a hold and that's a hold time. So that's once the attack is done, it gets to this hold and it'll stay on that hold before it goes to the decay. So again, this allows you to stay at that maximum volume a little bit longer. Sustain, decay, attack, hold. Make it visible, mink. So this is pretty easy to see. There's our hold up there, right? Okay, so let's make my hold super long. I'll make my attack. Well, I won't make it super long. I'll make my attack and decay short so we can hear it and I'll make my sustain quiet so we can hear it. Right here, how it sustains at that at that high level for a moment. Make that hold shorter. Could be nice for neat little accents. Again, we can adjust that hold in real time as I play. And so then just take that idea and think about our A, D, B, D, R, and then you can figure out what the A, H, D, B, D, R does too. All right, I'm gonna leave it there for today. Just a quick note, all I did today was affect the amplitude envelope, but all TVCs can be applied to any parameter. So again, we could have this control and envelope filter. Maybe you don't need an attack, decay, sustain, and release on your envelope filter. Maybe you just need an attack and a release, or even just an attack and a decay. Maybe you want to make a glissando. Just take your pitch and add an AD envelope to that. All right, that's all I got. Let me know what you come up with.